Okay, this segment is about EPA's position on lead-based paint, and it's a fairly cut and dried one. EPA has basically said that lead is not usually a hazard if it is in good condition, and this is referring to lead-based paint. You can imagine that a child might even go licking or biting the wall, which is one of you know, the imagined scenarios if you have, if you have lead on the paint, if it's in good shape, he, a, a kid would have to actually bite the wall or whatever in order to get that paint into his system. This is a very unlikely scenario. So hence the EPA statement that lead is in uh, usually not a hazard if, if it's in good condition. And again, they put out the statement also that homes built before 1978 are the ones with the problem. They have also provided guidance that basically says if you do have uh, paint that's in poor condition, the remediation, the abatement, is to actually scrape off what will come off easily, capture that, get that thrown away, and then you repaint. It is as simple as that. In this segment, I want to talk about where you can find lead materials. and. Um, you know, it's not just lead-based paint. I'd mentioned in a previous segment that you can see lead-based paint inside and outside, but nearly every time it's going to be outside because that's where the paint is in worse condition and you can actually get access to the, um, the paint that might be 20 or 30 or 50 years old. So, uh, but there's others. You can actually have lead in, uh, in lead pipes. You can have lead in lead pipe solder. And then, of course, you've got the lead-based paint. You can also have lead in drinking water. And uh, those of us that are as old as I am remember back when there was leaded gasoline. Uh, you can't get that anymore, at least not in the United States. Most of the world, that stuff has been banned. So as relates to the uh, lead pipes in the house, um, the idea is that water might be not a lead problem uh, coming from the city and then it comes into the house and maybe you have an older home that has lead pipes. When that is the case, you can actually scour some of that lead from the pipe and have that get into the drinking water where you ingest it that way. Uh, in many cases, those lead pipes uh, are at least 50 years old and and if there is scouring going on, those pipes have probably ruptured by now and should have been replaced by now. Uh, as the home inspector, I will rarely see lead plumbing. But if you, if you see something and you suspect it, whether maybe you don't know whether it's lead plumbing or galvanized, one way to find that out is to actually scrape it with a screwdriver. And if it comes up shiny, that's lead. Similarly, if you put a magnet on it, uh, a magnet does not adhere to lead plumbing, so that's another way to do it. But uh, for me, I prefer to, to do the, sh the shiny and the scratch test, and honestly, it just doesn't happen very much. What is a lot more common is the lead solder. In many cases, you'll see maybe copper plumbing where they used a lead-based solder to, uh, to attach pipe A to pipe B, and in that particular case, you know, that was banned as recently as 1986. So that is a lot more possible. For lead plumbing, I will see that only in homes that are extremely old, maybe the early 1900s. But as, uh, as far as the solder goes, yeah, we're talking about it could be, you know, a 1980s type home. Now, something to be aware of is that um, since about the 1990s, EPA required water systems. See, there's two things that can happen with water. It can either scour or it can deposit. So two ways for a pipe to die. One is actually for it to dissolve away and then start leaking and need to be replaced. And that's what's called a catastrophic failure. Or you can have a whimpering failure, which is basically the pipe's not getting scoured, but you're having dirt and calcium and you know water hardness and you know whatever actually deposit on the inner lining of that pipe and it gives people a little bit more time to do the fix when they can do it rather than wake up on you know thanksgiving day morning and find out their basement is full of water corrosion is the scouring and then and then deposition is the coating so epa required that um, 
city water systems make their water chemistry so that it coats rather than scours the, in the interior of the plumbing lines. So as a result, uh, by now it's been decades and lead-based solder is much less of a problem now because the interior of those pipes has been coated so that if there is any lead solder there, it's, it's generally not accessible to the water to be, to be removed. Lead-based paint, again, I mentioned you can have it on the exterior, interior. Um, on the exterior, as the home inspector, I can grab an area where maybe a, it's peeling or maybe there's some in the dirt. Whenever I see peeling paint in the dirt, I think of my daughter again as she was eating that dirt and wondering how many children are eating lead-based paint while they're eating dirt. Of course, the lead-based paint isn't good for her, but I'm sure that dirt wasn't good for her either. And who knows what health effects there may have been associated with that. On the interior, you're really only going to have access to lead if the paint is damaged. And like I say, you know, there may, there may be 10 coats of paint on in a home that was built in 1922. And if it's in good shape, uh, the home inspector is only going to be able to access, access the last one, the top one. And you know, one thing a home inspector is not supposed to do, especially without permission, is to change the home in any way and to actually get a drill out or to start chipping off paint so that he can get in and see if any of those layers are lead, that would be improper. Similarly, if you've got, say, seven layers and the third layer is lead, uh, the chances of that lead-based paint layer actually getting out into the living space, uh, very thin. So as a result, um, in my opinion, it would be improper to go digging or drilling through a wall to see if you can identify lead in any one of the previous layers, assuming, of course, that the paint is in good shape. If it's not, then you can just pull off a piece and check that.